Today, I'm gonna to walk you guys through our proof of concept for our CXL memory subsystem. So we'll start with the motherboard itself. So we have our next generation motherboard designed here. The CPU here is an Intel pre-production Sapphire Rapid CPU. And alongside the CPU are the DDR5 DIMMs. For the CXL component, we have designed it such that it fits into a standard PCIe chem slot. And on this card, we have an Intel pre-production FPGA. On this side, we have a by 16 CXL 1.1 interface. And on the other side, we have two DDR4 memory controllers. Each of those memory controllers is connected to one standard DDR4 register DIMM. And so we have a total of two DIMMs, each of which is 32 gigabytes for a total capacity of 64 gigabytes behind the CXL memory. The other thing that we have implemented on the FPGA is a CXL 2.0 device interface. This provides us with a management interface so that we can do monitoring, firmware updates, or collect things like errors. So as an example, if we wanna know about errors that are happening on the DIMMs, uh, for example, for the media itself, if we wanna look at uh, correctable or uncorrectable ECC errors, we can use the device interface to help us collect those errors using the standard CXL management driver. All right, now let's boot the system. So let me walk you through what happens as the system comes up. So as the system firmware comes up, it will recognize that there's a device installed. It will train the link after the link has come up and trained at the correct speed. In this case, Gen 5 or 32 giga transfers per second. The system, system firmware will then recognize that it's a CXL device instead of a PCIe device. So because it could recognize either one, it depends on the device that's been installed. In this case, of course, it's going to come up as a CXL device. It'll enumerate, and then system firmware will map it in as a CXL memory device into system memory. So now let's take a look to see that the system has come up and see if it came up at the correct link speed and link width. Okay, so now we're back up in Linux and the system is booted and correctly identified the CXL device. So we can see that uh, the uh, CXL device shows up here in LSPCI. Further down, we can see that it has correctly identified as a CXL device and the DVSEC registers um, have been correctly mapped. So we can see CXL capability, CXL control, and CXL status, for example. And then finally, we can see that the kernel has correctly associated the driver for the CXL device, and it's now mapped accordingly. Now that the card has been correctly enumerated and mapped, let's take a look at how it actually gets mapped into system memory. So if we look at the NUMA CTL output here, we see that we have uh, in a total of three nodes. Two of them are the CPUs with their associated uh, CPU cores enumerated uh, and the local DDR5 memory. And then finally, node two here, as you can see, there are no CPUs because this is a CXL device and there is 64 gigabytes of memory. Remember, this is what we had installed on the card. So everything is mapped correctly. And the CXL device is now mapped as uh, NUMA node two. All right, now let's run a test on the memory itself. Make sure it's working the way we expect it to. Here we can see that we've run a, a number of tests on the memory itself. A variety of different kinds and we can see at the bottom here that the test successfully passed which means the memory is working as we expect it to work now that we have the system up and running and the memory is tested we're ready to do a lot more extensive testing so thank you very much for joining us today for our quick demonstration